Thank you and good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, since the beginning of the conflict in Syria, UNHCR has registered more than 600,000 Syrian refugees in Jordan. And actually, the majority of them, they live within the uh, Jordanian community, so not in refugee camps. Among others, um, the key healthcare needs are non-communicable diseases, such as diabetes and hypertension. And therefore, MSF treats already uh, more than 3,500 uh, refugees in um, northern Jordan. The access to healthcare, um, actually, access to healthcare was free of charge for uh, those non camp uh, refugees until November 2014, since when the refugees actually have to pay for health services and public facilities, although at a, a subsidized rate. And previous uh, surveys conducted in Jordan suggest that there's actually limited access uh, to health care, including for uh, NCD care. So therefore, um, we have conducted a study uh, to determine the access to health services for non-camp Syrian refugees. And we looked at uh, general adult health, child health, uh, NCDs, and antenatal care. I'm just uh, showing you today the results from the uh, NCD section. So uh, specifically, we've looked at the health care needs service utilization and expenditures, and then uh, certainly we identified the main barriers to access to healthcare. So uh, we conducted a cross-sectional household survey. We had uh, 329 uh, randomly selected clusters, and for each cluster we had eight households. Um, as I said, so non-camp Syrian refugees in Irbit Governorate, which is, by the way, here in northern Jordan, bordering Syria. We've included uh, households arriving well after the conflict. Um, and then for the NCD section, we uh, looked only at adults. And the conditions we looked at, they were uh, self-reported conditions. We looked at hypertension, diabetes type 1 and 2, cardiovascular uh, conditions, thyroid disease, chronic respiratory conditions, and lastly, cancer. So um, we selected the clusters and the, their respective starting points um, by a random GPS coordinate, uh, coordinate selection. We used mobile uh, data collection tools based on the ODK. Um, and we had 18 data collectors teams who uh, conducted the survey between May and June 2016. Overall, we um, had 2,589 households consenting to participate in the survey, which overall covered al almost 18,000 individuals, which was back then 12.4% of the population. So some results. So um, first of all, the adults were in the mi minority, so 45.7% uh, were actually over uh, 18 years old. And among those, females represent the uh, majority. And we see actually the biggest difference between uh, male and female in the youngest age group, between 18 and 39 years old. And then the gap actually declines with increasing age. We had um, quite a large proportion of 12.6% of the adults reporting they received no formal education. However, we had more than 60% uh, who said they had received at least secondary education. An average household had about 6.8 members, and those uh, 6.8 members um, lived on an average income of 337 US dollar. That was in the month uh, prior to the survey. When we asked for the expenditures, they were uh, substantially larger, so 506 US dollars. So unsurprisingly, we had almost 80% of the households reported uh, they have accumulated a debt already. <coughs> so then let's look at the um, prevalences. So the most prevalent condition was hypertension. That was reported by 14% of the adults, followed by diabetes. And this is combined, type, two, type, two, uh, type 1, type 2, 9.2%. Um, and then thirdly, cardiovascular conditions at 5.7%.
Then number four and five were chronic respiratory diseases and thyroid diseases, uh, both of them less than 5%. And then lastly, cancer reported by 0.6% of the adults. So we also looked at actually the morbidities and comorbidities. So we had um, almost 45% of those with an NCD said they actually suffered from more than one condition. And the um, most, the biggest groups here were hypertension only. And then we had 17.6% of patients said they suffer from hypertension and diabetes, and then diabetes only. So those two most prevalent actually uh, conditions here make already 50% of the caseload. And we have uh, respiratory diseases. And then as the next big group is uh, essentially the cardiovascular conditions uh, to be added to this. So 8.1% um, of the patients said they had cardiovascular conditions in, in combination with hypertension, diabetes, and then hypertension and cardiovascular conditions only. And lastly, <laughs> only cardiovascular conditions. Now this is... Um, actually important, so knowing now the comorbidities, we can estimate that 21.8% uh, of um, the adults uh, suffer from at least one uh, non-communicable disease. So next we uh, investigated the access to care, and therefore we've randomly selected one NCD patient per household. Um, and um, looked at how often they've actually seen a medical doctor in the, in the last six months. So it turns out that three quarters of the patient had at least one consultation. And then when we asked for the last time uh, the patient uh, needed care, we had almost 23% said um, they did not seek NCD care the last time it was needed. So. Now, very interestingly, the next question is, what is the reason for it? Um, and the main reason was affordability. So patients reported the provider costs were unaffordable, and that only includes direct health care costs. Um, we have knowledge, for example, of not knowing where to go, or availability of services. Uh, so that also includes, uh, for example, long waiting list. They were less prominent reasons followed by approachability and acceptability. So in the approachability, we have transport issues and transport costs, and acceptability uh, is, uh, for example, rude or rejecting staff uh, behavior at the facilities. Now, importantly, this is perceived affordability. And um, in order to um, essentially see whether economic household factors are somehow uh, associated with the health-seeking behavior, we conducted a logistic regression analysis um, and looked at factors in general um, associated with seeking care when needed. And I'm only showing you the most um, interesting uh, results here. So first of all, we found that um, age uh, was a, um, an important determinant as we found that uh, almost, so, so among patients who are older than 60 years old, um, are almost two times more likely to seek care when needed compared to the youngest age group. Another important point was the type of the NCDs. So here we see that uh, patients with the cardiovascular conditions were actually less likely to seek care when needed compared to NCD patients who have any other conditions but cardiovascular conditions. Um, in contrast to this, diabetic patients were more likely to seek care. <laughs> Same is true for hypertension. Um, so patients with hypertension were also more likely to seek care when needed. So by coming back to the economic factors, um, so the household income we looked at, and then uh, in line with what was reported previously as a perceived affordability, we see here that patients coming from the uh, richest household income uh, quintiles were two times more likely to seek care <coughs> compared to patients from the lowest income quintile, while there was actually little evidence for an association for the other uh, variables we looked at. So when we talk about affordability of services, the question is then certainly, so where did the patients actually go and how much did they pay for it? So um, 
the, the patients who did seek care, uh, mostly, or the majority, slight majority of them went to an NGO sector. Uh, less than a third went to the public sector, and 18% went to the private sector. And across all sectors, including those patients who did not pay for the services, the average cost for a complete um, medical visit, so including laboratory and medications, is on average 23 uh, US dollars. And even though that doesn't sound a lot, um, at the end, it's making up for almost 7% of the average household income that time. We also looked at um, access to NCD medication. So more than 90% of the NCD patients said they, uh, uh, they need regular medications uh, for their NCDs. But 23.1% also said they had an interruption of their medication for the supply that lasted for longer than two weeks in the previous six months. Again, we asked for the reason, and as previously noted, again, it was reported it's an affordability issue. Um, other uh, reasons that were mentioned is um, patients decided themselves to stop the medications or they did not know where to get the medications, acted on MD instructions or a variety of other reasons. So before I come to the conclusions, a couple of limitations you might have noticed. So we talk here about self-reported NCDs um, that harbors the potential for under and over-reporting. We're talking here also about a, uh, a community that has prolonged limited access to care. So uh, we can expect an underdiagnosis of NCDs, so the real prevalence could be in theory higher. We've used snowball sampling, which you know leads to clustering. We've been taking care of this in the design and the analysis. And then lastly, um, I've been mentioning several times so economic factors, and we've only looked so far at the household income. However, we have to actually look at the ability to pay. So after uh, cost for rent and everything is subtracted from the income. Um, so there's an additional analysis to be done. Summary and conclusion. So in terms of needs, yes, NCD is a, uh, care is a key requirement. One in five adults suffer from at least one NCD, and the highest caseload comes from diabetes and hypertension. The access to NCD care, so yeah, the majority um, of patients we interviewed did access care, but still approximately a quarter of patients said they did not seek the care they needed and or they suffer from an interruption of medication. Barriers to care, the financial aspects of the reported unaffordability of the provider cost, high income patients were indeed more likely to seek care, and then the financial burden of one NCD medical care visit is relatively high with 7% if we talk about a disease which requires regular follow-up visits with a medical uh, doctor. And then one aspect that we haven't looked at, but even for those who do or who did access uh, medical care, who were able to afford it, what are the opportunity costs for them? So what else could they not pay for after they've paid for the medical visit? So there's uh, some work, more work to be done. And then um, overall, we still see the need for an increased support of NCD health services. Um, for Syrian refugees in Jordan, and we hope to be able to engage uh, national, regional, and also international partners to um, help make this happen. So, and then last but not least, that was certainly not all my work. Over the time, we kept more than 100 people busy with that, and I would sincerely thank everyone who's been working so hard on that. Thank you. Thank you.